All right, so not long ago, I put out an unboxing video of this kit, the Vox Telstar. And oh my, in that video, I got so many questions and comments as well as on Facebook and Instagram. So I figured today I would address those questions and comments as well as show a little bit more about this kit and kind of my thoughts after playing it for a couple weeks. So let's get into it. First up, the hardware. It comes with a hi-hat stand, bass drum pedal, snare stand, a cymbal arm, and then all of the necessary mounts and legs for the toms. But in the video, I said this about the bass drum pedal. The footboard was on the opposite side of the support, so I just had to undo the chain and flip it around. But actually, I guess I'm just not that smart. So there's that. What's the go with the cymbal arm? Why didn't you use the cymbal arm for your ride? What made you go for a regular stand rather than mounting on the cymbal arm? The position of the ride was a bit low and flat for me. This is usually how I have my ride cymbal. It's not super high, but it is angled a bit towards me. And if the mount on the bass drum was angled up a bit more, it'll probably be a little bit easier and more comfortable to set up the ride cymbal, at least for me. Would you consider the hardware to be cheap feeling? The shakiness of the hardware bugs me. The hardware looks like my first kit from the 70s. Overall hardware seems pretty cheap, right? Hardware looks like major crap. Sounds amazing, by the way. I guess you all don't like flat base stands. I mean, I kind of understand it. They're not my first choice of hardware. The snare will wobble around some in the basket and the hi-hat stand, I did my best to really wail on the thing and really stomp away at it with these big old 15 inch hi-hats to prove that Sure, things might wobble around a little bit, but the stands aren't going to collapse in the middle of playing. Now for the drums. So many questions about the shells, the sizes, the depths, the bearing edges, all that stuff. So the snare drum is 14 by 5 and has 8 lugs. The rack tom has 6 lugs and is 13 by 7 and a half, which definitely isn't a standard size. The floor tom is 16 by 15 and a half, which again isn't very standard and has 8 lugs. And now the bass drum. According to Vox, this is 18 and 12 by 13. So 18 inch diameter at the larger side and 12 inch diameter at the smaller side and then 13 inches deep. But also it's 26 inches wide. So imagine if a 26 inch bass drum, 18 inch floor tom and 12 inch rack tom had a baby, this would be it. On to the shells now. The snare drum and two toms are made out of alder, and the bass drum is made out of birch. All of the shells are six plies and seven and a half millimeters thick, and the edges on all of the drums are a 45 degree inside chamfer and a three millimeter roundover on the outside. So now for all of the questions about the bass drum heads. Can you get drum heads for the bass drum head? Can you get aftermarket heads like the Power Stroke 3? Have or fun or while searching for Can you get, heads for can you get drum heads for bass drum I wonder how the bass drum heads are going to get bass drum heads. Where can we buy the bass drum heads? Where can we buy the bass drum heads? Bass drum heads will be available for this drum set. Obviously, they have to make some for the kits that come with drum heads on them. But down the road, should you bust the head, they will be available and you won't have to buy a whole new drum set just to get a bass drum head. But a couple things worth noting, these heads will actually fit on the original Trixon kits and Vox kits. One thing that didn't even cross my mind was the batter and resonant side heads on the bass drum are different because they're mirror images. And as of now, they only have plans of making these as Remo Ambassador Coateds. So with that being said, I definitely recommend using an impact patch on the batter side. I recommend using one on any bass drum head, to be honest, because it will extend the life of the head. And also, I really recommend using one on any coated head because if you don't, it will sand away at your bass drum beater. 
But speaking of pedals, there actually isn't a right or wrong spot to put it on this drum. There isn't a huge difference in sound. Of course, you can tune one side higher than the other, but I do prefer it on the larger side, just a couple inches below the logo. So there's a couple other quick questions I thought I would answer. What's the deal with the wrap? It's made out of a soft PVC and definitely is kind of squishy and has a softer feel to it than a normal drum wrap. Why is there a black dot on the head? What's the knob you are turning on the bass drum? The black dot that you see on the bass drum head as well as the knob that I was turning is the internal muffler and the bass drum actually has two. There's one on the resonant side as well as one on the batter side, but the one on the batter side has a felt strip going across it should you need more muffling. Why would you make a bass drum like that? If we take a look at the inside of the bass drum, you'll see that it looks pretty normal other than the shape, but if we take a look at the original bass drum, you'll see that it has a baffle in the center of it, which essentially turned this one drum into two different drums, which is the point of the weird shape of the bass drum. The melting bass drum is really a copy of the 1960s Trixon Speedfire. The name of this kit actually threw me off a little bit too because the original Trixon kits with this bass drum were sold as the Speedfires, but when they became available in the US under the Vox brand, they changed the names around a little bit so this was sold as the Vox Telstar, not the Speedfire. Good luck finding a case for it, I assume. The bass drum would probably fit in a 26 inch bass drum case if I had to guess, I'm not sure, don't quote me. And it might fit in a 24 inch soft case, again, don't quote me, I really don't know. So I've been playing this kit for about a month now and I've used it in a bunch of different videos and actually all of the drums you heard in the background of this video were from this kit. I will say that after having this in my possession for a while and playing on it so much it has lost its mystique a bit but again it's such a great sounding kit. At first I had no idea what to expect you know typically when you get weird and unique things you're just paying for the looks but this kit definitely has the sound to back up its looks. So hopefully you all enjoy taking a closer look at the Vox Telstar. I definitely had a blast with this kit and you all seem to really enjoy it too. Again, all those other videos I use this kit in, everyone seemed to have such positive feedback about it. So this kit can definitely hang. 
But I am curious to know if you all would play this kit. So let me know in the comments. And again, I have to give a big thanks to Vox for letting me borrow this kit and use it in a bunch of videos and for letting me feature this on my channel. So big shout out to them. Their links are down below as well as all the other videos I made with this kit. So be sure to check all that out and I'll catch you in the next one.